Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, April 16, 2020, Optimal Health Associates. Uh, thanks everyone for listening, and I'm always doing my best to try to provide accurate, honest, and correct information. That's always my goal. I did put a post on a little while ago. It was one of the journal articles in, concern, in regards to SARS being manipulated at the University of North Carolina with the help of the Wuhan virologist. There's several other, I mean, that article's complicated if you don't understand genomics, virology, and things like that. But I've read it, understand it, and so has multiple other people in terms of interpreting what it meant, which was they manipulated the spike protein and put it on mice. That's the first of several articles by Do that um, Francis Boyle, sorry I said Thomas Boyle, Francis Boyle, um, the PhD professor emeritus at University of Illinois um, Law School, who's the expert in biologic weapons in the United States, um, pointed to. There's several more articles. I'm not gonna find all those for everyone. Um, that's you either believe me or don't I don't I don't really care but I did provide in the post a review by another doctor which points out the names of the articles and if you get to go to PubMed um, the National Institute of Health research site you can find the articles but you're gonna have to spend time like I did and spending time and reading stuff helps you become educated which I would point out and I actually when I was refining it today read some other really interesting articles on SARS manipulation and they were all by the Wuhan Chinese doctors it was so incredible they have done all these research studies manipulating the SARS virus to do immunology and try to figure out antibody stuff. And I still think it gets back to the Defense Department report that they weren't trying to develop a biologic weapon. They were trying to stress the virus to make it more effective and then be able to make an, an immunomodulator or antibody to render it inactive so they could would have a ready program for an outbreak. I think that's actually, that would be my theory as to why they're doing it because there's so much data on them manipulating the SARS virus, which I had not looked at in terms of a literature search before. But if you do, you can find that. It's very exciting and interesting, but I do think it was more accidental than anything, but you know, who will ever know about that? But read the post, make your decisions. I'm just providing data. That's all I can do. So statistics, um, Oklahoma, about 126 deaths, 2,700 patients roughly. Um, our statistics are so messed up in Oklahoma, I don't even know what to do. So I don't know if they're accurate, inaccurate. There's no way of knowing because when you talk to people at the Oklahoma State Health Department, they don't even have permission to speak. We're hoping to have a conference call with my inner hospital CMO group, chief medical officer group, and I've invited one of the epidemiologists to join us. She has to get permission from the Oklahoma Health Department to address a group of people who control the hospital systems for about 1.7 million of Oklahomans. And, but my guess is she won't be allowed to speak to us because God forbid they would be clear or honest about anything happening in the state. So we're working on that to get the data. And sometimes I don't tell people names when I'm doing these because I can't say names of people who give me information in the state because they will get crushed if their supervisor, whoever decides that they shouldn't have said it. I've gotten an amazing amount of grief for the things I have put out and some of the things I've done to help our community. And so for someone who's not an independent person with their own business like I do, when you're employed, you got to be careful. So you have to respect me or respect those people and I have to respect their privacy and protect them. Um, nationally, we're at 630,000 infections and about... 33,000 deaths. Bill Bennett and another guy, the former Secretary of Health, were comparing the fact that right now we're at going to be at 68,000 deaths and flu 60,000. Syllogistic fallacies once again, but um, that so we shouldn't have closed the economy. Bill, you idiot. We're going to only be at 68,000 deaths because we closed things. If we hadn't closed things, we'd be at 200 or 300,000. So saying we're only at 68 and we shouldn't have done it. No, that's the positive outcome. We are only are going to lose 68,000 people. And that's not even including the mini peaks we're going to hit in the second wave. So let's not even worry about that. Worldwide, we're at 2.2 million and about 135 to 40,000 deaths. I mean, the numbers are pretty impressive. Uh, so we'll just have to see that. The bad news today, scientifically, was the Indian 
uh, government and Indian researchers that was collaborated, I think, by Taiwan, Taiwan, um, but it was another group uh, out of country confirmed that there's mutations on the coronavirus in India that were defined in January, and the data is only coming out now, which I'm going to get to in a second, why that's important, that there's a significant mutation on the spike protein on the coronavirus, which it would has occurred in a variety of Indian patients, which makes it even more effective, infective, sorry, but it makes antibodies and potentially uh, um, vaccines ineffective against what, uh, against the coronavirus, because we have what this group over here of coronavirus, and all of a sudden we have a new one, and the vaccines we're going to hit at that point, or as I always point to this over here, at the spike protein, but if the spike protein suddenly has a change, then everything we're doing for this whole group isn't gonna work. So that's very concerning. The other concerning thing is that data was established in January, but again, it didn't come out till now. Why is that happening? It gets back to China. Anyone who, who, who promotes a change of the deadliness of the virus gets intimidated and squelched by China. It's what it is. Look at the data. See how they've uh, enmeshed with the World Health Organization. And it's very, very, very disturbing. And anyone who says, oh, this virus is different or more deadly, their lab gets closed down. Look at all the Chinese labs who published the genomic data early. They're all closed now at the universities. Look at all the whistleblowers. Look at all the doctors. Every single thing in China that anyone in China or related to China gets squelched for being honest about the virus. Just how it is. Um, Oklahoma stuff, we're going to be going through the different phases that President Trump's people discussed today. Phase one is where we're going. So we'll start opening up elective surgeries, some other things on the 26th. Um, highly likely that's going to cause an increase in cases, but be that as it may, we that's a decision that's done. Phase two can occur once we've had two weeks of declining cases. Um, I don't think that's going to have any bearing on Stitt's decision at all because he's not referencing data already. So why is he going to follow any data moving forward? So, But the perfect world is it's two weeks of further decline and you open things up more, hairdressers, things like that. I think that's going to happen anyway by May 8th. Um, and then you go to phase three, two weeks more. But it really should be in a perfect world would be four weeks and four weeks because the virus uh, time in terms of it can be um, occult or not expressed is more than 14 days in a substantial number of people. It could be up to 24 days. But so figure a roll out over the next six weeks and we'll in terms of normalization of people. I would definitely encourage everyone to be on um, masks or use masks. Uh, I would wash your hands. I would do everything possible to socially distance. Another scientific thing that's come out, and I just want to point this out from a media perspective. Trump said Plaquenil will work. There's this huge hue and cry that it doesn't. That's utter nonsense. It absolutely effing works. Oh my God. And there was a data point out today that shows it works. The whole thing that happened with the NIH, the FDA, is they have dismissed dismissed all Chinese di uh, physicians and scientists as being idiots. There's this whole concept at the FDA that if it isn't a study done in the United States, they're wrong because we're the smartest people ever. That hubris, arrogance, whatever you want to call it, is incorrect. Smart people can do things if they're not Americans, okay? And it's all, it's all right. So the Chinese data has been validated. Hydroxychloroquine is highly effective early. Um, it looks like some of these antivirals may be pretty highly effective even later, but the Plaquenil is very safe early. And I want to emphasize, Plaquenil is very safe. I have used it in my practice for the last 15 years because I do so much primary care. I have hundreds of patients on it that I haven't written, but the, all the rheumatologic patients I see collaterally for hormones are on it. My wife's been on it for 13 years. Um, Plaquenil has issues. It can affect your eyes. Now and then it can cause leukopenia or a lowering of your white count. They can cause some hair thinning um, and some other stuff. But the real serious things with Plaquenil, nephrotoxicity, neurotoxicity, are like hen's teeth. And, meaning hens don't have teeth. That's an old person expression. 
So that's very rare, and that's for people with chronic use. A short-term exposure exposure of hydroxy hydroxychloroquine is very very safe. Chloroquine has a thousand times more. Um, that's an exaggeration. A ton more side effects. As Rita Wilson said, it made her feel dizzy, icky, nauseated, horrible. I took chloroquine when I went to um, uh, the Middle East when I was in college on a on a overseas trip, and oh my God, I couldn't take it. Yeah, I got sick as hell. But hydroxychloroquine or Plaquenil is extremely well tolerated for the vast majority of people. And if you're doing it for seven days, it's going to be extremely safe. So everyone has a choice in life. If you get COVID-19 and you're sick and your doctor says, hey, I'll give you some Plaquenil, you make the choice to take it. I would take it. Anyone I think who has read any scientific data would take it, but you get to make the choice. And you can believe CNN and the, and the narrative of the media that said that it's evil because Trump said it, or you can follow the science. And remember, the media is going to consistently flare on any suggestion, whether it's Plaquenil, the Chinese did it, pretty much anything that doesn't follow their narrative. And remember, there's been a lot of narratives in the last few years that were incorrect. I mean, and again, I'm using Trump, not because I'm a Trump supporter, but just because they're so obvious. Like the narrative when Trump said, oh, they're listening to me this, and listening to everything I do, and everyone made fun of him, and then it was like, oh yeah, it comes out, no, the NSA and CIA and everybody was listening to him. You look at Romney when he was debating um, Obama, and again, just obvious ones because of the media bias. He said, the Russians are the greatest threat in the debate. And everyone made fun of him. The Russians aren't a, a horrible group. They're not after us. Oh, well, you know, fast forward. No, he's completely correct. And there was another great Romney one where he got just crucified by the media for saying that Chrysler had switched all their production of Jeeps to China. Oh, that hasn't happened. That hasn't happened. Oh, turned out after the election, yeah, they actually had GM had switched like 60 or 70 percent of, of that production to China. So the media is not going to give you information that you can rely on. If you believe in mainstream media, don't listen to me. I'm not your guy. I'm trying to give you data and you have to question, which is what I put in my post earlier. Question. You can question me. You can question everyone. But if you just believe what CNN says, Fox, Stephen Colbert, which I've mentioned again because some people were offended. I mentioned Stephen Colbert. Um, the exaggeratory statements these people make matter eventually because it programs people to get into a mode that's not scientifically valid. So that will be what I'll finish with. Evidence matters and Ocom's razor, which is simple explanations most likely are true. So if something appears obvious, trying to come up with convoluted explanations are very unlikely to matter. So simple explanations end up mattering. And thank you to Bill Bondurant for reminding me of that. And a big shout out to all the people that help me and are doing great care in Oklahoma City, including um, Carl Roskowski, Tommy Ibrahim, uh, Kirsty Winfrey, David Chansom, Cameron Mantor, um, Aaron Boyd, uh, Mike Padgham, and a whole laundry list of others who I can't even name. Uh, and thank you, Kim, for all your help and AV support. <laughs> anyway, good night.